Hello. Welcome to Discover a New Future, a program geared at empowering women to be the best versions of themselves. I'm your host, Faith Saunders. Today's topic is around finances, a topic that makes many of us quiver when we talk, when we hear about finances um, for one reason or the other. But it's something that impacts every aspect of our, every aspect of our lives. So today, I am happy to have our host here, Helen Hogan, to speak with us about finances, why it's so important for us to really um, address this dreaded topic, and most of all, um, what are some of the things that we could actually do to start um, becoming a master of our finances rather than a slave to it. Um, Susan Orman said in her book, Woman and Money, and I'm going to quote, while women have established and expanded their roles and re relationships when it comes to navigating the financial ramifications of this new world, they are using old maps that don't serve them well or meet their needs. This is so true. Um, we have come a long way in terms of, um, so, in so many ways. Um, women have taken on so many different roles, so many different responsibilities, and as, as a result, we're earning more. Um, I'm sad, sad to say we're not earning as much as our male counterparts, but we're earning more than we have in the past. So um, today I have Helen Hogan here, who is a financial planner, to talk with us. And um, one of the things that I really like about Helen, because I met Helen about five years ago, Helen? Yeah, about five, five years, five, six years ago. And I, um, we talked about my own finances, and Helen looked at what I had, and what really impressed me with working with Helen was that she didn't try to fix something that wasn't broken. She really was very honest with me about the things that I could change, but she said some things, they were perfect, don't do anything about them. And I've met other financial planners who have in the past tried to sell me things that really, I really didn't need. So when you can find someone with integrity and who really stands by what she's saying, um, I think that is something that there's not a lot of, about a lot um, happening about in people in nowadays. So I really am really happy to have Helen here with us today um, as our, our guest. So as we start, I want to ask Helen, what is it about finances that really got you? What really got you into this realm of doing finance? You could have done so many other things because I know you have so many gifts and talent <laughs> talents, but you chose to find. go down the path of helping individuals with their finances. Absolutely. Um, previous to having this life, I was a project manager working in corporate life. Um, but back in 2002, my mom passed away after being in a nursing home for two years. And I had been her administrative caretaker. I took care of the Medicare and the Medicaid. Um, and after she passed away, I decided, A, I didn't want to be in that situation when I got to her age, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went and, and investigated long-term care insurance. And mm -hmm. I found it to be very complicated and very expensive. And I decided maybe at that point that we all get that little light bulb and said, you know, I can take the skills that I have mm -hmm. and apply them to help other people. Um, so very quickly I learned that selling long-term care insurance, although very important to me, mm -hmm. needed lots more. You can't mm -hmm. go in and recommend to someone a product mm -hmm. without knowing their full situation. So I went and got more licenses and a year and a half later I became a full financial planner. Um, working in um, a, a major investment firm mm -hmm. um, and uh, my mom is most moms are was very important to me mm -hmm. and I really do thank you for that introduction but as I tell people if I don't do right my mom will haunt me <laughs> <laughs> that one is funny <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, I, you know, it's so it's so. Um, it always has. You hear people's um, life story, and it's certain things that happens in their lives, sometimes not pleasant things, that really turn their lives around and help them to really tap into what their true passion is. True passion. So yes, so um, that's 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 so powerful what you just shared. So, why are so many women? so terrified about even looking at their finances? Why do we shy away from the topic? You know, there's a, n a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, 
first of all is the um, knowledge mm -hmm. and skills. Mm -hmm. um, before coming today, I did some research on some surveys by um, different financial institutions, Prudential, LPL Financial, and Morgan Stanley. And I was surprised to learn that 60% of women do not feel, or excuse me, do feel that their skills and knowledge are below average wow. as it relates to finances. And even more uh, upsetting to me is that less than 30% of us are confident that our investments are in the right places. Wow. Less than 30%. That's significant. I think another reason is we're not as big a risk takers mm -hmm. as men are. Mm -hmm. um, combine that with, <clears throat> excuse me, the lack of knowledge, the lack of confidence, mm -hmm we end up ignoring mm -hmm. our money. It's just over there somewhere. And we all know what happens when you ignore things. They go away. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but women also have a different perspective about money. Mm -hmm. um, men look at money more as if it's a game. How much more can I accumulate? Mm -hmm. Women look at money as to what they can provide to others, mm -hmm. to themselves, and to their loved ones. And I was surprised in this one of the surveys that 79% of wealthy women mm -hmm. um, are afraid that their money is going to complicate their relationships with their loved ones. Really? So, I, I, that was just astounding. I can't imagine a man worrying about that. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> and I think that the, the, the final biggest reason that we don't embrace our, our finances mm -hmm. is we've been conditioned for generations that the men handle the finances. Mm -hmm. So we don't even look and we just shut off when the, the talk turns to money. Mm -hmm. So um, th those are really interesting statistics and information that you just shared with us. And Shocking. I can see it could get us into real deep trouble if, if we continue on this path. Um, I was also thinking that as women, while you were talking, that as women, we mentioned um, we earn less than men. I think. I think this, what's the statistics do you have? 81 cents. 81 cents to every dollar that a man earns, yeah. Um, so uh, when you have less, I think that's also, you, you, you want to safeguard Correct. that. So I could also see that being a reason. I, I'm, I'm saying that because I know myself too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When you have less, you, you, you're tighter with yes, it. Yes, ex exactly. So, um, yeah, so that's interesting. So what are some of the benefits of women really you know, what, what, what is in it for us if we really step up to the plate and start looking at our finances? There's uh, many benefits. Mm -hmm. You get that confidence and that control of knowing where your money is going. Mm -hmm. You're able to prioritize, set your goals, and make sure you're saving mm -hmm. for your goals so you mm -hmm. have a plan. Um, simple things like having your bills come in at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. um, I know people who are afraid to open them because mm -hmm. they don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. Well, once you're in control, those things, you know what they mm -hmm. are, so there's nothing to be afraid of. Um, the other area is that when you're in control, you, you, you've planned, so mm -hmm. you have a rainy day fund. So mm -hmm. if the roof leaks or the car breaks down, you have something to take care of you. That's true. And in really life situations, if you're married, for instance, mm -hmm. and your husband handles all the finances, mm -hmm. if you have the knowledge about where your money is, what, how much you have, if something really horrible, mm -hmm. you got divorced, he died, mm -hmm. disabled, had a stroke, you at least can know where things are. So you're not going to make a bad situation worse. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, you have peace of mind. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about, you know, where's it going to come from? from Wow. So I think that's the biggie, peace of mind. That is so interesting. I, Susie, in Susie Orman's book, she, she wrote about that as um, for as women, many of us, going back to the point that you made about um, women giving that responsibility to their husbands, and God forbids it does happen, we don't want it to happen, but it's life, that um, our husband pass away or um, we have, we have a divorce. Some women, most women, um, don't know where the finances are. And because they gave up that power, because again, it's giving away our power, when, when they gave away that power um, of their finances to their husband, the husband 
before most of the time, especially if the husband is initiating the divorce, he's divorced a long time in his mind. So he's making plans already in terms of safeguarding some of or right. sheltering some of this. You know, not everybody, but it does happen. Right. You know, and the woman is left out in the cold. And the, the, she was saying that a lot of women after divorce live on a poverty level for Very a long time. So. Very so um, that's so important also for reason for doing that. One of the things you talk about is opening up your credit card bills. Um, and what came to mind regarding that was um, last year sometime I went to a, a, a class called D-Free Class um, here in Somerset. And, um, I'm familiar with it. Yes. And um, one of the things that came out in the workshop was that because we're so fearful of our finances and what is out there lurking out there for us, we don't open our, our mail. I've had come to clients who say, here. <laughs> really? And, and the seals haven't been broken. For months. <laughs> for years. Wow. <laughs> wow. And then just, you know, tell me what's in there. Right. Just so terrified, of, terrified, terrified of, of doing it. And one of the things that he challenged us to do um, was actually opening our bills and he, we, during the course of the, it was a 12 week course, I think, we had to, we were challenged to actually find ways that we could actually save money. And one woman at the end of that series, I think saved over $40,000. You know how? She opened up her bill, her, her mail, after just keeping putting them aside, and she came across a uh, uh, something from her, her mortgage company stating that she could uh, refinance at a very low interest rate. And she said that when she looked at it, the expiration date had expired, had gone by, but she said, you know, now that I'm in this class, what's the worst that can happen? Right. Let well, me just call, no. <laughs> call. And, and she said she called and they, they gave her the rate that um, was, was on, on the, the paper and she saved that amount of money, you know? It's huge. A, a good reason to open your, your statements. <laughs> exactly. So it's not always scary. There are just sometimes some good stuff there <laughs> if we open it. So, um, and I think the more we open it, I'm going just not to belabor the point, but the more we open our bills, the less we intimidated will we'll, because we know what to expect. Knowledge is power. Yeah. That's so true. I mean, if you know what's coming, what's in there, mm -hmm. you can handle anything. Yeah. So um, that's, that's interesting. So, um, so what are some of the unique financial challenges as women that we face versus that of men? Quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned one of them earlier, and that is that men make more money mm -hmm. than women. 81 cents, they make 19 cents more than we do. Mm. Um, so when we're working, we make less. Mm -hmm. But because we're often the caretakers in the family, we also are home taking care of the children, taking care of our parents, taking care of our in-laws. So we're out of the workforce. So mm -hmm. there are too many times when we're not even making money. Mm -hmm. So double whammy. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we live longer than men. Mm -hmm. So we have to have more money in order to, to sustain our life up till the end. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And going back to something I said earlier, um, the unique challenge is getting over this fear of, of money and being able to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So men don't have that challenge. Mm -hmm. Women more so. Okay. So yeah. those are to me the, the, the key things that hold us back. Um, that is, that's, that's interesting. Um, in terms of, I'm just thinking, what are some of the things that we can start doing as women to start really Taking control, Open, mastering our, our finances. Open those envelopes. <laughs> 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 and, and not just the bills, the statements too. Mm -hmm. um, your, your bank statements, your, your investment statements, your 401ks. Open them, read them, understand them. And if you don't understand them, call the number on the paper and make them explain it to you. Mm -hmm. um, you can always consult with people like me, um, but you should have a basic knowledge of what you have, even with a professional helping you. Mm -hmm. um, educate yourself, mm -hmm. read, watch TV shows that talk about finances, mm -hmm. um, newspapers, magazines. I've always, even before I got into the business, always been a subscriber to Money Magazine mm -hmm. because it's an easy to read, um, basic principles, um, good things there online. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of websites, including my own, mm -hmm. um, where you can find basic 
financial principles to learn about? I think it's very important to talk about the basics because I think part of it that really um, people are intimidated. I mean, return on investments, all these, I mean, it's like, okay, <laughs> you yeah, know, inflation. the inflation and all that. I mean, it's like, it's like a different language. What's a stock? What's, what's a bond? bond? And so forth. So um, those are really, really um, key things to really learn the basics, I think, because it, over, uh, if, you, if you go beyond that, in, if you start out beyond that, I think it, it's just like overwhelming. I do on occasion um, do a seminar. I've done it recently at my gym mm -hmm. called Financial Fitness for Women. Okay. And it goes through a lot of those basics so that you you get your foundation before you start laying on the more sophisticated, you know, knowledge. Right. Okay, I think that's a good idea. Maybe you could add towards the end of it, you could talk a little bit about that. Sure. Because something that I Actually, think... a lot of it's in here. Oh, okay. Um, but we go through more, you know, hands-on mm -hmm. at the workshop. Okay, that's awesome. Do you have another one coming up or anything? Not scheduled, but okay. I, we'll let you know for sure. Okay, definitely. Um, so if there's any other... Um, any other things that we as women we can start doing? Yeah, I attend these kinds of seminars. Mm -hmm. um, talk to people. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, women think that they're going to look stupid. Mm -hmm. well, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. Normalizing things does make a big difference. We sit with our girlfriends or our friends and we talk and we share about the shoes we bought and everything, what's happening with, with Mary Jane Doe, the rich and kids and everything. But when it comes to talking about some more serious issues, I mean, that's, that's, that's we, we kind of shy away from that. One thing I, I, a friend of mine did years ago and I was a part of it for a little while, she did a financial club. She started oh, that yeah. and we, it was, she brought all of us together and we started just talking about finances and she, we're all learning at the same time. Different people got different pieces that we had to explore and then brought back to the group. What a great idea. And then we spoke about what a stock was, what a bond was, and she brought in like an expert occasionally to kind of talk about different little, you know, aspects Asset of classes, classes mm -hmm. and, and so forth. So we can start really learning and ask the questions from experts because I think also asking questions, sometimes we ask the questions of the wrong person who is misleading us could be misleading or not giving you full information mm -hmm. um, or assumes that they know better than you and, and going to talk over you mm -hmm. instead of explaining and then educating um, I think that's critical if you have an expert that it's a two-way mm -hmm. it, it can't be just Right. You know, you're not a sponge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think it also goes back to in terms of the expert portion of it, what I spoke about, what, what impressed me when I met you and right. spoke about my finances was that you didn't try to sell me something that um, I didn't need. And I, I've met, as I said earlier, financial people who have, they're working for organization, they have a product, and their main objective is not basically my or your self-interest, is basically that of they selling their commission. commission. Yeah, I'm earning their commission. Right. Yeah, so um, to that point, what are some of the things that we can actually do? Or how do we screen? <laughs> <laughs> how do we screen for those <laughs> kind of folks? <laughs> um, first and foremost, check with your friends and see who they are working with. Ask them how long they've been with them. Ask them what they've done for them. Mm -hmm. um, do they feel comfortable with them? Um, I would also recommend just like when you, when you engage a, a financial planner, you, you're giving them control of a lot of your money. Mm -hmm. So we're expensive. Mm -hmm. Whether I personally make that money or we cost you money, mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't matter. But you need to make sure um, that the person is focused on your priorities, mm -hmm. not theirs. And they need to be able to explain things to you. Um, a CFP, a Certified Financial Planner, is a designation I'm currently working on, um, which forces us in our business to be held to a higher level. Okay. Um, many of the people in my industry are Series 6, mm -hmm. Series 7s, and CFPs are different. Mm -hmm. um, the Series 6 folks, excuse me, um, only have to offer something that is suitable to you. Mm. A Series 7 and a CFP are required to be a fiduciary, meaning that I should not recommend anything that would not be good for you. Wow. So there's a, a difference there. And we can be sued for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So look for the, the CFP, look for the Series 7, look for the referrals. Oh, and then what I was trying, starting to say about the money was interview several of us. Mm -hmm. Because 
Some people don't like my style. I'm mm -hmm. a little too touchy-feely for them. Mm -hmm. um, but other people really like it. So you need to be comfortable with mm -hmm. the person that you're working with, mm -hmm. as well as trusting them. I think that's a um, very, very important point. Um, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm a single parent, right? And not that I have a lot of money. I still don't have a lot of, <laughs> lot of money. But I remember doing back in the days being when I just became, um, you know, start was starting out with my young kids and didn't have a lot of money uh, at the time, you right. know, um, to even hire a financial planner. You know, that was way out of my, my budget. Although it's needed, but it's just something that I just couldn't afford at the time. Um, what are there any practical things that we could start we can tips we could give women to start doing in their own lives to really just kind of get a hold of their finances a ton of things okay one of the things that i do when i first meet with clients and they always look at me kind of funny but i, I help them figure out what their goals are mm -hmm. you know people want to tell me how much money they have or how much they spend i want to talk about what does your life look like over the next five years? What things are coming up? Are you gonna buy a new car? Are you going to have a baby? Are you gonna buy a house? Mm -hmm. And what does it, that look like 10 years from now mm -hmm. and 20 years from now? Mm -hmm. And the reason I do that is because it gets the money and the, the goals combined. Mm -hmm. So you have the motivation to work on budgeting, mm. which is where you have to get to next. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's a checkbook, budget, which is what I call them, mm -hmm. open your checkbook and write out everything mm -hmm. you spent um, and then figure out where it's going. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people are really surprised after we've gone through that process and I said, okay, this is what you make, this is what you spend, right? Anything mm -hmm. else are we missing? And there'll be a thousand dollars left over. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, okay, we got a thousand dollars we can save. Mm -hmm. And they go, no, I don't have a thousand dollars at the end of the month. <laughs> so it's really getting in there and identifying those details and then tracking it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then putting things aside. Um, automate your, your savings. Mm -hmm. Tell the bank to take money out of your checking and put it in your mm -hmm. savings. Tell your employer. Pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and do it automatically mm -hmm. so you don't see the money. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised at how quickly it grows. Mm -hmm. Of course, spend less than you make. Mm -hmm. I mean, you won't have anything to save if you're spending more than you make. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really hard, I think, right now for young folks because they're coming out with all that college debt. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to kind of balance what you're mm -hmm. paying off and what you're doing. Um, going back to the 401k, one thing that I find a lot of people don't do because they think they can't afford it mm -hmm. is they don't contribute to their 401k mm -hmm. or they don't max it out. Wow. And what I mean by that is normally if you have a 401k, the employer will match some percent, mm -hmm. usually about 3%. Mm -hmm. So they'll give you 3% of your salary mm -hmm. if you're in the 401k. If you don't, you're throwing that money away. Mm. And I see that happen an awful lot. So get out there and sign up for your 401k. Right. Um, and the last thing that you need to do, and whether you do it with somebody or do it yourself, is you need to do an annual review. Mm -hmm. um, how has your life changed? Did things go this year the way you thought they were? Mm -hmm. Did you get a new job? Did you lose a job? Mm -hmm. How's those investments doing? How's those savings accounts doing? Can I tweak something here? If you don't review it annually, you're going to get off track. Mm. And your assets may need to be rebalanced right. because the market's done this or done that. Mm -hmm. So you really do need at least annually to do a review. One of the things that I, um, I um, as um, some people may know, some people may not know, that I'm um, really I'm a life coach. I work with women to help them to realize their dreams. Um, and one of some of the things that you're talking about is helping to people to create a vision for their lives and putting the monetary, connecting you're it right. to the, fin the financial aspect to it. Um, but also one of the things that I find with a lot of women um, is that um, they don't know where their money is going on a daily basis. You know, we go to Starbucks, we spend a dollar here or a dollar there, and we say it's just a dollar, but we don't realize how it adds up. adds up. So one of the things that I do with um, some of the, my clients is have them do on a daily basis, and I have done this for myself, I did it for over six months, where I track my finances on a daily basis. 
everything I spent, I put it on. I had a little book that I wrote it in. I'm telling you, when you're so, when you're deliberate and you're focusing on writing it down, you stop spending after a while. You're like, it really puts you on track to think about, is this really, should I really be spending this money? It goes back to prioritizing and to your goals. Because yeah. now you can go, okay, I, I want this right now, mm -hmm. but if I spend $5, Maybe that's my, that commercial on TV, that's my orange money. Exactly, exactly. You gotta set aside that orange money. <laughs> exactly, exactly. One of the things I started doing last week, it just came to me. I told you I have these kind of, I don't know why, <laughs> these things that just come to mind. And one of the things, I was cleaning up my refrigerator and I was throwing out some food and I threw out an orange that had gone bad and I, I threw it in the garbage and what came to me was, that's a dollar. <laughs> I kind of just visualize the orange as a dollar, and I'm like, we really need to stop and really look at, you know, do we, when, when I'm going shopping, really, what am I buying, and really, are we going to be eating all of this? Um, so again, it just it's guess, little steps, little steps, you, you know, you take and you trim and you trim and you trim. trim. Well, Especially when you, you know you're a single person and, mm -hmm. and your budget's tight, it's not like you can put aside a hundred dollars a week. Exactly. But you can start trimming away, and you'll be surprised how quickly. That it, it's, and, and when you have that goal of what you're doing it for, mm -hmm. you know, I, I want to be debt free. I want to be retired when I'm 60. Um, mm -hmm. It does. It, it does. You, it to put everything to, um, again. It's about being deliberate about what you're doing, and these little tips that you're sharing does help you to kind of be more deliberate yeah. um, and help you to eventually feel more fulfilled in your life. Because so often we are doing, we are living our lives, but we're still not fulfilled. We feel like there's so much, and we just. In, in our mind, we think we can't accomplish that. So many people are having financial success, but I can't do that. But again, you can. It's just being more deliberate and looking at your, your situation. Figure out where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Look at where you are and, and what do you need to do to get there. Exactly. And you can't take big bites. Mm -hmm. you you got to just nibble away at it. Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> I was coaching someone this morning and I said, um, the best way to eat an elephant, something is to take one bite at a time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> one bite at a time. So um, I think, uh, any parting words, Helen, um, in terms of any parting questions, I should say, that you want to share with our, our, our viewers and also include for us um, your information, how people can actually contact you. Wonderful. Um, the, the, Parting word, one of the things we've talked about mm -hmm. uh, over and over is kind of the roadblocks that women have. And what I have found is, and it's related to how we look at money differently, but each person needs to individually go inside of themselves and figure out what makes them uncomfortable mm -hmm. and write it down, look at it, and get over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or consult somebody. Yeah, consult me, consult <laughs> me. I'll help you. To, to help you get over that roadblock. But it, it, that is probably you know a, a key step to do. Um, resources, I, I wrote some of them down, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, moneywisewomengetsmart.com. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful place to go. Um, my website, I believe, is mm -hmm. on the screen, helen-hogan.com. There's lots of great articles up there that you can read. Um, books, you mentioned Susie mm -hmm. Orman's book, Women and Money. Um, there's another one out called Investment Basics for Women, um, Essential Guide to Taking Charge. I would just get your feet wet, mm -hmm. get out there and do it. Call people like myself, <coughs> which by the way is 908-385-5534, or reach me on my email, which is hogan at sfs, sunset financial services, rep .com. Um, <coughs> And my last parting word, and it's because it's so dear to me with mom, is that um, the majority of residents, excuse me, if you go into a nursing home today and you look inside the rooms, you don't see very many men. Mm -hmm. They're all women. So we as women need to really plan for that late life. And I don't mean just having enough money, but when we can no longer bathe or dress or feed ourselves, mm -hmm. what are we going to do? And it, it may be your kids, it may be your spouse, it may be insurance, it may be your house, you know, mm -hmm. you sell it. But I, I really want women to, to look at that in the future because I think it's going to hurt us more than men. Wow. 
Thank you so much, Helen, for being on today's show. I mean, this My has pleasure. been just so informative. I've learned a lot myself also, and I really My appreciate pleasure. you coming on. Um, one thing I learned many years ago from an old friend, and God bless her soul, um, she's deceased. And one thing she told me when I first came to this country 30 years ago was, it's not what you earn, it's what you save. So I'd like to end today by just reminding you, it's not what you earn, it's what you save. And until next time, think positively. Thanks.